You're listening to The White Rabbit, conversations on the art of presenting in a rather noisy world. Your hosts are Matt Krause and Albert Rosanes. Matt helps leaders of international companies speak, write, and present with confidence. Alper is a communications trainer and a startup investor with a diverse portfolio of companies in Barcelona. If you like this podcast, please share it with friends and colleagues. Now, on to Matt and Alper for today's conversation. Alper, today's topic is kind of an existential one because we're talking about, basically, to paraphrase, I think it was Bruce Springsteen, where the, the topic for today is training. What is it good for? And the topic came up. The topic okay. came up because we were talking with Andreas recently, and we were talking about customer guarantees with Andreas. And as we were talking about customer guarantees, we started wondering, well, what can we guarantee as when we're training? And that's how this topic came up is, is training. Does it bring any benefit to anyone? Yes. So that's what we're going to weigh in on today. So I kind of have my opinions on the subject and you have your opinions on the subject. Where should we start? Uh, let, let me start hearing you and then I'll jump in. Okay. My opinion, remember, remember how... Andres had a, a great phrase. Uh, he had borrowed it from somebody. He said, "When the something like when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, something like that. Do you remember that? Yeah, I think it's an old Buddhist proverb. Yeah, and uh, I think that's a good way to make the distinction between training that works and training that doesn't. Because a lot of, in, in my opinion, a lot of whether the training works or not depends on does the student want to learn the skill or does the student just want to have the dream of learning the skill? And I started to, exactly. to come to this opinion. Yeah, I started to come to this opinion because my wife is an English teacher and she has students who actually want to do the work of learning English. And then she has other students who don't really want to do the work of learning English. They just want to be able to say that they learn English. They want to say that they're studying English. And the f first group, the one that, you know, is actually there to learn English tends to have great results. And the second group, the one that has the dream of learning English, they tend to not have any results at all. And uh, mm -hmm. so that's how I've come to this, this opinion. It, it reminds me uh, a little bit of a, like a professional basketball player. You take a, a professional basketball player and the rest of us who are not professional basketball players, we imagine the glamorous life of a professional basketball player. And if we think of, you know, heavy gold chains and uh, loud, fancy parties at big mansions in the Hollywood <laughs> Hills and, you know, <laughs> scantily clad women at the pool party and stuff like that. And we think, oh, wow, you know, the, the life of a professional basketball player is really glamorous and fun. But the thing is, the, the reality, the behind the scenes reality that's not nearly as fun to look at is that the life of a professional basketball player or, or any high level athlete is actually extremely boring and repetitive. I mean, a professional basketball player spends hours every day practicing free throws. It's like the most one of the most boring activities in all of basketball is, is the free throw. And they practice that for hours. And then, mm -hmm. you know, just something as, as simple as dribbling the ball. They'll practice dribbling the ball between their legs for hours. Dribble, dribble, dribble over and then dribble, dribble, dribble and dribble, dribble, dribble over and over again for hours. And, and then and, 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 and then they'll practice one small move over and over and over. They'll spend hours every day practicing it. And then they'll go to bed early and they'll get up early the next morning and they'll do the same thing. And this is the, yes. the reality of life as a professional basketball player or a pro in pretty much anything. Whereas the image that the rest of us have is limousines and fancy parties and, you know, pool parties in the Hollywood Hills. Heavy gold. Let's not forget chains. that. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Heavy gold chains and stuff like that. That's the image, but that's not the reality at all. So if, if you want to be a professional basketball player, you need to love basketball enough so that you can put in those hours of boring and repetitive practice. Training is a lot the same way. If you really want to learn the skill, you need to put in the hours and hours of boring practice. And if you don't, then 
training is just, you know, a fun diversion where you get to get away from your desk and maybe eat a bad lunch <laughs> that was brought in by a <laughs> caterer. <laughs> And, and, and that's all day. training is. And yeah. And then, then when the training is over, you forget everything and you go back to exactly the way you were. And so, but for those people, they already have what they want. The, what they want is the dream of, in this case, the dream of giving great presentations. They already have that dream. Dreams are free. Anyone can have them. Uh, the people who training is good for are the ones who are so they want the skill so badly that they put in the boring hours of practice. That's my take on it. So training is great for some people and it's a complete waste of time for other people. What's your take on it? Well, my take is pretty much in, in parallel with the scenarios that you mentioned. And when I think about it, I think there are, I would say there are three prerequisites for the training to mm. be effective or even worth it. I mean, okay. unless these three prerequisites are in place, I would uh -huh. encourage anyone not to spend any money or set aside any time for, for any training engagement. And the first one would be the one that you mentioned. I mean, when someone wants to get in terms of skill set, let's say from point A to point B, but currently they lack the necessary skill set. So they they mm -hmm. they know what they lack and they want to acquire that. So that's in line with what you said, they, they need to want it. But I will go okay. one step further as a second item. And this is in line with what you said, you know, everybody wants to get better at presentations. Well, not everybody. And I have seen them firsthand in, in some of my trainings, but let's, let's stay with the ones that they, they say they want. Mm -hmm. I think there's a sometimes very clear, but sometimes pretty unclear distinction between wanting to get better and having mm -hmm. the internal conviction, internal validation to, to, to actually get better. I want a lot of things, okay. but for wow. most of, for many of those things, I'm not willing to put in the necessary effort, which is actually the third item that I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. And when this person actually prioritizes time, resources, wow. like yeah. money and, and other, other efforts to acquire these wow. necessary skill sets to, to help them get from point A to point B. So to me, there is a distinction between wanting to get better and having the internal violation to get better. Mm -hmm. And one clear sign of that, I think would be, are you putting, are you prioritizing this in your life? Are you putting the time? Are you putting the money? Are you putting the effort to actually achieve this? Otherwise, I mean, there are so many courses, for example, training courses that I purchased online and they're just sitting in some library on, on some online training platform. Yeah. Some <laughs> of too, them I too. did on the first couple of days and finished. Some wow. of them I said, I'll do this soon, but that soon was like seven years ago. So sure, sure. obviously I didn't have the same internal conviction and priority for, for all those training topics. So I am, I'm in line with what you shared and I will just take it one step further to say, uh, there's a second level of, of personal engagement, which is determined by, I believe your inner, I mean, you know, it's in your gut. Do you have that conviction um, or not? If you have, yeah, nothing can stop you. And if you don't, I don't think even if came the best trainers in the world, that would be a huge waste of time and money. And I think you should stay away from that, <laughs> both as a person and as a company. It's uh, a good point. So on our, on our next episode, so we're going to bring in the, the outside perspective of Andreas. And another thing that yes. I want to hear more about, you mentioned, you mentioned this phrase, internal validation. And I want to hear a little bit more about that because this is a new phrase that I've heard. So I want to hear a little bit more about what you mean by that. And somebody who has the internal validation, what are the signs that, uh, that somebody has the internal validation? So for, for, for me as a trainer, when I'm looking at somebody, when I'm looking at one of the students in a training session, are there outward signs that I can see that show that, yes, this person has the internal va validation, but that person does not. So we don't have time to go into that today, but when we, on, on, on our next episode, I want to hear you describe that a little bit. 
Is that cool? Yeah, of course. I think there are clear signs and then there are subtle signs. So we can dig into those in the next episode. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Alper. And uh, I'll uh, talk to you at the next thank episode. You. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The White Rabbit with Matt Kraus and Alper Rosanes. You can subscribe to the podcast on Spotify, iTunes, or through your favorite feed.